welcome to Viral Vlog episode 7. I accidentally deleted one of my favorite videos and it's lost forever, so I experienced some frustration. I went through my boxes and found some things I had not seen last week. More Harry Turtle artwork hiding under the other Harry Turtle artwork. Other incredible stuff I found. I'm going to show that off. I'm going to show you some of my non-fiction writing from this week. This is week number 7 of the global pandemic lockdown. And um, here, here uh, at Viral Vlog, we just keep on rocking and we don't do uh, as much talking. The time cube took a bath earlier, but I didn't get it on video, so you'll just have to trust me. It was extremely cute. One, two, three, four. you that song is brand new it doesn't really have words but um i thought it was pretty good anyway uh let's look at the box now um oh this thing isn't so easy to um do as the other one is oh maybe it is yeah there we go um so um yeah we're we're only about five minutes into it um so this is not really so bad so this week i was going through this box i have all these boxes here you see miscellaneous flyers and zines from 1990s um 90s to 2000s letters and zines wall decorations etc so you know there's all these things like that and in this box i had not gone all the way to the bottom um and oh i found some amazing stuff so this artwork on my wall here 
I've always loved that my friend Tim Dunn gave me. He he found it in the trash. And um, I knew that at some point in the past I had figured out who made this art, but I couldn't remember how I figured it out. It's not in the back of that. I took it off the wall and looked on the back. And it turns out what the deal is, some artwork by this mystery artist was also in this box. So this is just amazing. Look at this. Um, this was down the bottom of that box. This is just amazing. Uh, AD 1973. Um, so that's from 73. And look, it has a name. Stephen Theodore... P-A-K-Y-Z. Um, so now I can actually look that up. And this is just so... For the Love of Helen, painted by the artist Stephen Theodore Packies. I'm going to guess how is how you pronounce it. Portrait of the Artist, Stephen Theodore Packies. Portrait of the Artist's Wife, Helen Louise Macon Packies. Um, there's even a stamp. Um acrylic paint over pen and ink. I mean, this is just amazing that I found this. I can't believe I forgot I had it. And, um, I mean, look at this architectural rendering. Just look at that. It's amazing. 1963. Stephen Theodore. So I'm definitely going to look this up now and do some more research on it. Here's one that's similar to the one I have on my wall. And I mean, it really is just incredible, incredible artwork. I couldn't believe this. And I can't believe it was languishing in my my archives <laughs> back there. Um, so how cool to have found these couple of um, gems. And I can't wait to look that artist up. Now I also found this Ebony R um, to Justin from Ebony R. With a little cassette tape, mixtape. Um, and, and Ebony R is a, a local artist um, who did does uh, street art and stuff a lot. But, um, I, uh, his brother, Rob Woods, um, actually have one of his books up here. Uh, whenever I look for things, I can never find them. Oh, look at that. It wasn't as hard as I thought. Um, so Rob Woods, this is his book, 36 Lessons in Self-Destruction, Rob Woods, and actually the same publisher... Um, well, they changed over. It was Locust Moon Press. Now it's uh, Beehive, but but it's uh, some of the same people um, involved in that. Do Beehive that published the Herbert Crowley book actually published this Rob Woods book? And Rob Woods, um, there's Justin. Thanks for your art. This Rob um, is an amazing comics artist, um, as you can see. Septa's finest and all this stuff, uh, as you can see from this. Um, so these are just amazing. Um, but anyway, this is his brother, um, and, uh, he's got a different style, as you can see. Um, maybe only similar in how completely unique it is, um, and very powerful work. And I, um, traded him, uh, a piece of my art for this at one of our, um, they have a thing they call First Friday in Philly. Of course, we're not having them now because global pandemic, but, uh, they used to, if the weather was warm, all the artists would go outside and sell their art on the sidewalk, and then the cops would come by and shoo you off the sidewalk half the time, but <laughs> anyways, I, uh, I sat next to him at one of those one time and traded him some artwork for this one, so cool to have that. Um, so how cool is all of this? Um, artwork that I found in my box. Um, we'll keep going with stuff that I found in the box. This, I don't know if you can see this that well. Oh yeah, so this piece of amazing artwork here is actually by my cousin, John Weary. Super cool cousin. And I um, got this from him in 2013, or he did it in 2013. I think I got it from him in 2013 though. Um, just super neat, um, sort of sequential, and then it loops together with these arrows. You see this starts here. I don't know if you can see this well enough, and it kind of loops around and goes through this one. Um, and uh, so cool that I found that in there. Now, I also found in here from years and years and years, um, just random things I would find at Kinko's at, well, now they call it FedEx, but basically when I'd be doing photocopies for my zine in the trash or something, I'd often find all kinds of really interesting eccentric artwork and stuff. And some of it's just writing and stuff like this that I would dig out 
you know, this is from probably 1996 or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, I have a lot of things. Um, Dear Maine Postal Services, I've noticed some of the group saying connected locals, uh, FOP, pretty boys, girls, cops, also triple X girls to manipulate extraction of information provided for a congressional meeting of citizens and matters. You know, so it's like a lot going on with this, you know. Um, so that. Oh, here's a nice piece of artwork by Mandy. She gave me for Christmas one year. It says, to Justin, happy Christmas. Love, Santa. It's actually from Santa. Mandy played Santa that year. Um, it's a really cool little... I don't know. I think it's like an acrylic painting of hers. Um, so what else do I have from Box? From Magic Box? You know, a lot of just mystery stuff. I have no idea who did this. It must be an art student drawing or something. It's inner, It's an inner ear. It's signed, but I can't quite read the signature. Oh, Nicole Boitos. My friend Nicole M. Boitos. Um, she's a tattooer now. I believe over in England. Um... And uh, this is a print of hers, a self-portrait. Oh, I don't know if you can quite see it. It has this... It has kind of a little wrapper, but anyway. Um, it's like an etching self-portrait. Yeah, you can see it. Amazing. Um, a more found art sort of stuff. Oh, this is really funny. The party I'd never forget. The party I'd never forget and the African beauty crystal. The story begins at a dinner at the Olive Garden. Chris starts to brag about Crystal's beauty. Now Crystal is flattered and blushing at the kindness of Chris, and they start to head back to Crystal's home. They enter the house, and lust is in the air. Um, this story gets X-rated, so we're gonna keep we're gonna keep an R rating here and not go into it. But nice piece of little found art. Oh, this was an artist that used to, maybe still does, put these on uh, SEPTA trains, on the public transit trains, in the little, um, they have these little pouches, sort of, that you can put things in, and they would leave these in here. I collected these for years. I have a bunch of them. Um, unknown artist. I don't know if anybody's ever met the person or not. Somebody, I think, said they did meet them one time, but I have a bunch of these. Um... Oh, this I traded for somebody or something, and I can't remember the name of the artist now, and it's signed, but the signature is very cryptic, so if anybody knows who did this, get in touch. I think it's pretty amazing. Oh, so my friend Rob Sellers, a.k.a. Rob Banks, um, God rest his soul, he was murdered in New Orleans a number of years ago, um, so he's not with us anymore, but this is actually a bunch of his uh, fiction writing and stuff. Um, which is pretty cool to have, because he's not able to write anymore because he doesn't exist, so. Um, how cool to have all that. I remember he gave that to me. Um, I think he was homeless at the time, and I hadn't seen him in a couple years, and he happened to have this on him, and he gave it to me, and he was like, oh, I want to give you this for, like, safekeeping or something, and I said, okay, and I, and I did. So there it is. More of these, Subway. The Subway Artists stuff. Um, oh, here's a uh, stick man. This artist, stick man, a street artist that does these... Sim they're not like Toynbee tiles. They're made out of the tape that they use to make the divider lines. But um, he had an art show. And uh, I got this from him. It's a little playing card with his stick man stencil on the back. More of these Subway Artists. More of the Subway Artists. Another Ebony R. Um from Kinko's, which is funny. This is not the Kinkster referring to Kinko's, which is funny. Um, so, another mystery art. have no idea who that's from. Or the Subway Artists. Mystery art. Mystery. 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 Let's see. We keep going through these. Um, uh, from Kinko's. Oh, this is at 30th Street in 1995. I remember this really clearly. This artist um, sat and drew with me at the table at 30th Street at like 3 in the morning and was really great. We sat and drew together, but the funny thing about him, I remember, was that 
he was really, really super insulting to my own artwork while we worked on it. So he would draw these and he'd look over at what I, I was drawing and he'd grab my pen and correct what I was doing and be like, you don't know how to draw. You need to learn a lot. You got a lot to learn, kid, you know? Um, so I got some like fierce art lessons from this guy. I never, I never learned his name or anything. It's signed, but the signature is like with a lot of these, it's kind of vague. It, yeah, it's just vague. I wish, well, anyway. This is what I really wanted to show though, these ones, Beautiful Mary. This artist that used to wheat paste these and the local street artists kind of hated him because he did so many of them. He was so prolific around 2007 to 2009 or so that these would just cover every surface of every pole like all over the city. And it was just similar to the Toynbee tiles where people said, oh, it's got to be a prank or an art student, but it wasn't. Um, and I, I don't know whatever happened to this person or anything, but these were really intense. So. You know, these are beautiful Marys that they were wheat pasted up onto poles, but they peeled off or something. So, oh, they're, they're so they're please, please, please pray for little Bo Peep. The devil is the boogeyman. The devil kidnap, kidnaps millions of children and people every year in America, makes bats out of all of them. Um, keep the commandments and Christ will protect you. He had a lot of these things about making bats out of you, makes bats out of all of you. Millions of poisonous uh, corpses crying. All the dope from Mexico is poison. It's not in refrigerator. The dope turns something or other. Millions of children are dying. It's like this terrifying, you know, scenario. Um, Christ Radio, Beautiful Mary, listen to Christ Radio with you, Christ and Beautiful Mary. I mean, these are so, like all this stuff with the um, Snow White and the, oh man, it's like really intense. So this is more old Kinko's art from the 90s at some point back when Al Gore was a thing. More beautiful Marys. Um, I liked how it, what he used to do with the faces where he'd add little like paint, like like highlights, you know, and stuff like that. Like he would highlight them with a highlighter marker or something like that. Um, burn in hot lava forever. Um, yeah. Oh, this is uh, Beppe Knott from Baltimore from 2005 for um, her sister Mary's band, The Dirt, one of their um, one of their albums that they did, one of their recordings, and she did this. And I got a hand-colored print from her, I think, at a zine fest or something like that, some kind of thing. Anyway, so again, I'm, I see we're up to 17 minutes now, so I better shorten this a little bit. But I'll just go for, through a few more things from the box. This is a Penhurst dollar from when we used to go to the old big box... Um, psych institution Penhurst and uh, go through there when it was abandoned and the, they had their own script money for their for their um, commissary and so this was some of their commissary money from Penhurst. See it has Penhurst on the front and one of the inmates or whatever must have designed it. Um, I have uh, oh let's see yeah Abby, my friend Abby Miller, she's on, on Facebook a lot. Um, this is uh, some of her artwork that happened to be hiding in the box. The loop. The loop. I don't know what the loop is all about. Um, this one's pretty cool. Uh, this one's about Penhurst. We went through Penhurst together. And she did this one about Penhurst. There's a Penhurst. You know, that's kind of the Penhurst vibe, you know? Um, let's see. Oh, this is cool. Symbiosis, Symbiosis 2000 AD. Um, this was uh, Dan Higgs of Lungfish fame and stuff from Baltimore. Uh, made me this um, uh, recording of a, of a rare song and, it, and he put it in this little cool, um, what do they call that? Like, I don't know. It's not exactly a CD cover. It's like a slip cover or something like that with this little, with this little painting on the front from the... Um, I don't think this was from 2000. I think it was because the recording w that's in it was from 2000. Um, but uh, that's a cool little thing. Fractal brain cells I've showed off before, so I don't think I need to do that again. I don't know if I showed off fractal brain cell. Um, the one that's really big, but it's kind of hard to roll out. So Anyway, this guy from Japan does these collage things. And you send a mail art and he would make them into those. But this was the Terry Turtle one. I showed this one off last week, but I found this new Terry Turtle 
that's a flyer for when me and Mandy's band, The Great Cackler, formerly called the Geb the Great Cackler from Philly, uh, played the little grill collective in Harrisonburg where Terry Turtle's from, and uh, he made this flyer for it. Um, so it's February 8th, Friday, Little Girl Collective, Get the Great Cackler, acoustic uh, Celtic duo. I guess he thought we had a Celtic sort of sound. Susie Subways, she was on tour with us, our friend Susie. Um, so, yeah, and Terry Turtle doing his solo stuff. So how cool is that that I found that? Another Terry Turtle from the depths. Um, oh, speaking of, this is kind of funny. Speaking of Tony movie, I found one of our old flyers from when we were making the movie and we were looking for the things. Do you have information? <laughs> um, there's my old phone number on there. Um, what else? What else? Oh, Rollo Peters. Um, so I've been getting into doing my... Oh, I've been doing a little bit of my own artwork this week, I'll show you. Um, it's a small sort of drawing. I've just been working on this. I've been mostly working on my nonfiction writing, but whenever I get a chance, um, and I'm sitting a lot of times working on it, I'll just sort of work on this a little bit. So I've been going through that. And that's been a lot of fun. We'll see what that turns into. Um, now, the Rollo Peters um, section of the Mary Mulberry Clark biography. A lot of it is based on. Um, a lot of it is based on this one of my many boxes here. Everything's about boxes, right? Um, a lot of it's based on uh, this amazing manuscript that I found that was um, an unpublished. Uh, autobiography um, that he had called Au Revoir with Love. Um, and uh, there's a section in here. I won't try to find it now. I should have found it ahead of time, but I was a little bit stressed out about finishing Viral Vlog on time this week. So I didn't get a lot of things out ahead of time, but I did find there's a great section in here where he contracts the um, so-called Spanish influenza of 1918 and he spends six weeks in the hospital and almost dies. Um, and I thought it seemed very timely and poignant <laughs> to, our, um, to our current situation. Um, but of course the thing that really meant a lot to me in here was, um, was the... Uh, He's got several chapters, yeah, he's got several chapters about John and Mary Mulberry Clark. And, um, yeah, so that um, has been really what I've been working on this week. And uh, I could, actually... I thought about doing, doing a funny thing and just kind of, um, and just kind of, uh, reading chapters from my nonfiction writing work in progress. And I thought it might be entertaining, um, for some people to listen to entire chapters of the book. It's a way of sharing it without having to worry about, oh, somebody's going to steal it. Not that, well, good luck doing anything with it, but, um, you know, uh, I thought it might be fun for some people to listen to, but I didn't want to assume that um, people would want to hear whole chapters. But uh, I have been uh, showing off a little bit. Last week I showed the Gilbert Kane and stuff. So this is Rollo Peters. Um, that's uh, John Mulberry Clark's The Mask of Rollo Peters. Um, but... Um, there's a, pu a publication of some wise turn. But anyway, uh, he was in this play with uh, this famous Yvette Gilbert that was um, Toulouse Lautrec did caricatures of and stuff. These are, um, these is, this is artwork by Rollo Peters, some of his portrait drawings. Just an amazing uh, artist. But um, anyway, he tells a funny story about Yvette Gilbert with, uh, she was a legendary stage actress and everything, and. Um, he tells a funny story about Alice Lewis and Herbert Coley's wife and how in, in the play that they were doing, um, Alice Lewis is supposed to find her um, husband murdered and let out a piercing scream. But, she, but he says Alice Lewis was such a gentle woman, she really couldn't do a convincing piercing scream. And uh, she says, no, 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 you do like this, you do like this. And, she, and he says she screamed so loud that uh, windows were thrown open all, all down, you know, the avenue. And people thought somebody was really murdered and everything. And it's kind of a funny story. 
But he tells these stories about the Brocken and stuff, like he says, um, he says, uh, in 1916 to 1917, few motors ventured up deeply rutted South Mountain Road. Best of all, in summer, I remember the tinkling bell tiny of tiny bells in the distance, festooned on ribbons hung around his wagon, loaded with such diverse goods as to give the appearance of a perambulating bazaar. The little bells announced the approach of a sly, fat, sleepy Armenian peddler. And I happened to find a picture of this very thing that he's describing. So that's the peddler. And this is the Brocken back here in the background. Um, and just a lot of stuff in his narrative, you know, I could, I could, I could illustrate it blow for blow with um, pictures that I had found and stuff. And I thought that was really cool. Um, like he talks about, well, here's him and Amy Murray. He talks about his friend Amy Murray a lot. And there, there's the two of them. But, um, you know, he talks about how they got stuck in the snow at the Brocken in the wintertime and wa walking through the snow. And there's the Brocken in the wintertime and everything like that. So I've um, just been having a lot of fun doing that. And that's been kind of the thing that's occupying most of my time, of course, along with my um, nonfiction uh, writing in general. There's various covers to Gilbert Kanan's book. And, you know, um, but anyways, uh, I've been... Um, working on my own artwork just a little bit, um, but mostly working on this, um, epic, epic tome of the, uh, Mary Mowbray Clark biography, which is up to 515 pages now, and, um, <laughs> no end in sight. It'll have to be a, a two-volume, that's, a Martha Reither, one of, really one of my favorite artists at this point. It'll have to end up being like a two-volume thing or something like that. Um, so, I actually am up to 26 minutes now, so we could almost wrap this up, the viral vlog for this week. I really appreciate everybody hanging in there um, for another week. Uh, but we got to visit um, our other our other housemates and friends of our um, quarantine um, pod, at least real quick, to see how they're doing this week, you know. How are you doing this week? Oh, it's just changing the cat litter. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Great. Cat litter doesn't change itself, you know. Oh, you think cat litter changes itself? Um, I don't know. Maybe America's favorite fat cat changes it. I just crap in it. Oh, Garfield, that's very rude. <laughs> um, oh, here's Skookle. Say hello. KYW is on. Meow. Meow. Remember that time I came in and KYW was playing um, Aleister Crowley? Mr. Crowley. Ferdy. Hi. Hi. Are you going to eat? Yeah, you can have eating. This is Freddy. Sometimes she likes to eat when she gets excited. She takes one piece of food, she takes it away from the bowl, and she eats it. And then she gets another one. She shakes. And then she gets a drink of water. Hi, Freddy. Hello. 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 <laughs> okay. Do you have anything to add, Mandy, or anything to say? Okay. Would you like to read a poem? Yeah. Okay. Mayday poem. Read a Mayday poem. But uh, Mayday, Mayday. It may be corny to read poetry on your boyfriend's vlog. We don't care if things are corny. We just go. We just let it all hang out here on Viral Vlog, including corn. You know. Guess what? I'm what? corny. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> ready? Um, I've never been more ready. I haven't reread this in a while. We've been making it into a song in the band The Evasive Species. Hi, Ferdy! You want to hear a poem? You want to hear a poem? I have loving poems. Good. She really likes it if I sing poetry in a soulful voice. But I'm not going to do that. That's too corny. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Stop worrying so much about things being corny. I'm but... just messing with you. Okay. <laughs> so, um, let's see. What does it say? It says, snow melts, but in shadows. 
silver pink light refused, a curling sprout of a question never ceases in her doubts. In a thirst always drinking, the cat returns to the door to find grasses new and greening and the scent of a mouse. Pulled to the nest of your thinking, watching tales that get to spin, and the last steps that were taken, which led you further in. Lead me out of spring's desires. Pull me out of the empty flag of your doubt. Spring winds are only bitter. Pull you off of the shelf, where the deep shadows linger, where the grief doesn't melt. Oh, pull me out over bridges surprise as horizon unbridles the mind and releases spent time the snow is feeding flowers that was so good <laughs> ferdy did you enjoy that i really really enjoyed that a lot <laughs> that's great that was awesome thank you if ferdy enjoyed it it was all worth it yeah thank you so much for sharing your amazing poem and you might want to show everybody this really cute ornament oh. that i found that looks like ferdy what is her name Ask her. No. We have to come up with a name for this being. Somebody... Please write in if you know her name. Yeah, write in. And know? then also this lady. Yeah. Back up so they can see her whole environment. <laughs> okay. Very we need cool. names for these guys. Yeah. Now I'm going to go say bye to the cube. Alrighty. Unfortunately, he already bathed, but he'll he'll look very fresh for the vlog. Oh, I painted these spindles during COVID recently. They were they were old color, but now they're bright. <laughs> I said to Mandy, "What color are they?" She said, "Oh, I never noticed they had a color. I just thought of them as being old colored. Old." <laughs> now we can see that Time Cube took a bath because his bathtub has um, oil in it, which means that he washed some oil off of his uh, feathers and stuff. Um, and I'm really sorry that we missed it, but maybe next week if it's warm enough, we'll get to see him take a bath. Say goodbye, Cube. Say goodbye, sweetheart. That says goodbye dance. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, Friday, May 1st, 2020, Viral Vlog Episode 7, signing off until next week. Stay safe, stay sane, stay sound, um, saddle up, and um, ride into the sunset. Um, and return the next day. <laughs> okay, goodbye.